What's very interesting is, over the years that I've observed, no one throws a camera out. It could be 1955, it could be 1962. They do not put it in the garbage. Now, why is that? Very interesting to throw out an old toaster they're not using anymore, they'll throw out vacuum cleaners, whatever it is. They never throw out a camera. That's because they were the image keeper. That went on vacation with them. That took their family photos. Something about it, you held on to it. And that's what it did, it held on to me photography. And uh, in retail and photography since I've been around 20 years old and, and since the age of 24 I've owned my first store and then by the age of uh, 28, 29 I had three stores and kept them for several years and then eventually I got tired of having a few stores and uh, they were owning me, I wasn't owning them uh, so I felt like I was getting robbed of quality time of life so I sold two of them and I kept New Brunswick. Uh, because uh, I chose New Brunswick, it's a county seat, it's world headquarters with J&J, yeah. it's a college, <laughs> and I do custom framing. And I can do immigration pictures. So I did my niche markets, I chose a community that will stay strong. Full circle. Uh, but it's a uh, kind of an old classic camera store. Uh, I've had it for 37 years at this point now. You try to put oh, it yes. in that little okay. thing right there, and now it's as long as that little right. teeth has cut on, and you try to advance it, uh, uh, take a shot. My life is a store. Uh, I see the same faces, then we see some new faces. Uh, it's a very community-minded store, so I'm active in the community, in the business community, as well as other other projects going on in New Brunswick, because I belong. Turn it a little bit. That's it. That's perfect. Hold it. No, this is no good. Your eyes are closed. Uh, a company that had a dozen stores and worked them for a couple of years, and they went bankrupt and. I was in Plainfield in one of those stores when they were bankrupt, and so I saw, why don't I just open that store? So, by chance had it that uh, when they went out, I, the thing about in the old days was processing, developing and processing. You get that, you keep your doors open. So when they shuttered, I talked to a landlord a block down from the old store, and uh, he gave me a blessing, gave me a, a small store to open with. Uh, so within three weeks, I had a store. You know, and I just put a sign right on the old bankrupt because they keep it sealed for about a month. Yeah. It said, uh, you're processing and photos one block down. Okay. I'm one of the last men standing and there's uh, very few camera stores left and there's, there's less than 200 laps. I'm one of the 200 laps in America where there was uh, nearly 8,000 10 years ago. Uh, and so the stores have been closing up. Uh, we have a lot of my generation that are in their 60s or 50s or 70s, but they can't sell the stores, so they shutter it. And that's what happens to 90% of the stores. So it's kind of sad, my industry. Due to uh, the digital uh, uh, world and due to the internet, due to the big box stores, and sadly due to the people who aren't printing their pictures. You know, they're leaving them on plastic screens. And unfortunately, uh, what's gonna happen is 10 years from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, you won't have these images to share with anyone. They'll be gone. Yeah. You know, and that's the sad part that I see about the 21st century in photography, uh, that people will no longer have those, those photo albums and, and, and those memories. And, you know, they'll disappear. Uh, custom framing uh, has brought another layer to my store. Uh, not just financially, but artistically, uh, bringing art, bringing sketches, bringing lithos, uh, bringing all different types of things that a, a regular camera store would not have. 
And so uh, that's given me a new stimulation and just adds one more dimension to my store and also continue to survive. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. It's yeah. exactly what I wanted. Oh, look at that one. This one was my protest against the uh, uh, the Iraq War. And uh, this one was about the war between the merchants because uh, this other merchant uh, poured down his French wine and champagne down his toilet because the French wouldn't help us out. And, and I did just the opposite. I said, no war in Iraq and put signs on my window and, uh, and Bush still got his war. Okay, uh, we're in the basement of George Street Camera. This is my store, needless to say. And we keep a, a collection of cameras uh, from the 1850s to, uh, uh, to just pre-digital, I would say, so year 2000, give or take. Uh, so we can kind of just give you a little idea of what's down here. So uh, again, if we started over here, as I'm uh, on this side here, we're back to different kinds of magic lanterns. And there's magic lantern slides you can see here. And down in here, the whole box full of them. Uh, and if you look above here, these were magic lantern and opaque projectors. I started in in a in a flea market called Waterloo Plain in Amsterdam. And there was a glass slide that I was fascinated. I didn't know it pertained to photography. It was a hand-painted glass slide, and the guy uh, didn't speak English, just speaks Dutch, and something about a machine. I didn't understand what it was about, this, but I bought it because I fell in love with it. And later I found out that it was from a magic lantern, which was the hand-painted slides. It was the first slide projectors. So here it was in my field. I was attracted to it and thought it was unique, and here it was something that was part of my life. So I started collecting. Uh, it started there, and then I collected. A little bit of everything, you know. And I have a couple thousand items. You know, I have some of it here in the, in the store, uh, you know, along the shelves, so people can get a sense of photographic history. Yeah. Yeah, so 16 millimeter cameras, and 8 millimeter, and Super 8, and then you're getting into your video and your television kind of style cameras. Yeah, yeah. It's just a little bit of history. And then what's up? Now, if you turn around here and you look over. Here, these were mainly cameras in the uh, uh, mid 50s to the mid 60s. The ones with the two lenses were called TLR, twin lens reflex. I would say that 80% work. You've got to remember that um, uh, there are very simple mechanical spring uh, shutters and irises, so a lot didn't break down uh, with them. Very simple. Uh, this panoramic camera, which was made in 1894, is kind of cool because you'd crank up this, and you'll notice that the uh, lens on a spring would take a 120-degree picture, and it's kind of kind of a cool uh, camera. And uh, taken with that camera were these pictures because the camera came with them. And that's uh, Manhattan, that's um, Wall Street, as it was in 1894. So it's kind of neat that you got pictures with the camera that, that took it. And as you can see, this is uh, Central Park during the winter. And this might be Niagara Falls, looks like it. So kind of neat to have the pictures with the camera because it tells a little story. There's a woman in the gay 90s, I would say, the way she's dressed, walking through a forest. So it's kind of kind of neat to have that. That's one of my my favorites there. So I am going to take my collection, make it a wee bit smaller. Well, actually, I never sold any of them. Um, but recently, as I get in on to thinking about retiring, I'm at that age where in the next couple of years, uh, I think I'll go fishing, even though I don't fish, <laughs> which means I'm just going to uh, kick back. Mm -hmm.